There are steps that people take to walk away from God, and there are steps that lead us back to God. I'm going to teach on this subject two steps. Sin cannot be successfully covered. We find in the book of Genesis that's what happened to Adam and Eve. They did not successfully cover their sins. So now I'm going to read from Proverbs, the 28th chapter and verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. This one verse talks about two steps that we can take to come back to God when it comes to our sin life. In verse 13, again, it says these words, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. The word prosper in that verse means push forward. He that covers his sins shall not push forward. He's at a standstill. He will not push forward. His life will not advance spiritually because the attempt has been made to cover his sins. And God says this person shall, shall not prosper. You will not be successful in doing that attempt if you try to cover your sins. We don't have fig leaves today that we use to attempt to cover our sins. We Sometimes we have other methods that we attempt to use in covering our sins. And I think sometimes we fool ourselves, or I'm, I'm sure we do, we think we have a method that's actually covered our sins from God because God sees and knows everything. I want to talk about the two steps to correct this. It's only two steps we have in this verse that corrects this. Anyone today that listens to this study that's trying to cover your sins and you have stepped away from God, there's two steps now in this verse that will lead you back to the place you need to be. The first step in this verse is, but whoso confesses. That's the first step. The one that's trying to cover his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesses. But whoso confesses confessing our sins. When you and I confess our sins, we need to have the attitude not to try to give an alibi to why I messed up, not try to halfway do it. Confession means I, I'm guilty. I confess to you, I agree with the, you, God, your word that I've sinned. I've sinned. I, I, am the, I am the man. Someone else didn't cause it. I can't put the blame on them. I have sinned and come short of your glory. The first step back to having a great time with God in fellowship, again, is to confess our sin. The second step, this step here many times is not, it's not, uh, it's not done. We confess our sins, but listen very carefully. There's another step, another step, and forsaketh them. The word forsaketh means leave them. You know, confession is a part of getting right with God. But now this verse says also, and those that forsake them or forsake those sins. You know, I just can't go in confession and say, God, I confess my sin. If I got the thought pattern, I'm going to do it again. In John chapter 8, when Christ told the woman caught in adultery, he said these words, I do not, I do not condemn thee. Go and sin no more. In other words, you have forgiveness. You don't have from me condemnation. But don't go out here with the mindset, I'll do it again. You know, going before God in confession, I need to have a heart that's centered around, with your help, I'm going to leave this sin. I'm going to leave these sins. I'm not coming back tomorrow with the same thing. Now, I, I'm going to ask you to help me to do this. I'm sorry I have committed this sin, and with your help, I can't, by myself, can't do it. But with your help, I'm going to leave this sin and forsake this sin. Then you put up a guard in your life that I will not commit this sin again. Now, we'll have other things in our life to creep in, but every time we do, we need to understand I can't cover this thing. I can confess it, and I can, I can also forsake it with the help of God and not return to this place again. Because I think many Christians just run back, run back, run back all the time with the same mess 
And they said, well, I confessed it. I confessed it, but he, they, they, didn't, they didn't leave it. you got to leave it. Sometimes the environment we have that would cause this thing to happen, we've got to change the environments. And sometimes people around us that cause us to, be, to get, uh, get in this place of sinning, we've got to change people. You've got to change location. We've got to make steps to leave the place that we're in when you and I sin against God. The verse again said, don't, don't miss this today. I want you to understand what it's saying here. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but he that forsaketh them, first step, he that confesseth them, first step, and forsaketh them, second step, then it says this, this is the results, shall have mercy. Mercy means compassion. Now there's two steps that God says, if you do these two steps, you'll have compassion. Not, not only confess them, but forsake them, then I will give you compassion. You will have mercy. You will not have justice. If you had justice, I wouldn't even forgive you. But now you have mercy and you have compassion. Every day of our life as a Christian, we need to understand the importance of going before God with our sins. Because if we don't, they begin to pile up. And we have this thing of self-justification justify ourselves why we're doing these things. And we'll find people around us that agree with us. You know, that's fine what you're doing, that's fine. But the Word of God is very clear. Sins cannot be covered. They will cause us damage. They will cause us harm. When sin has finished, it causes death, which, which means separation. Not only a physical death, but separation from God and from the things of God. So please keep in mind Proverbs 28, 13. Write that verse down in your Bible somewhere or make a note of it because this is the two steps that will lead us back to relationship with God that we should have in fellowship with God. That is, confess them and forsake them. Then thank God for his compassion and for his pity. Until next time, from Clark Chapel Baptist Church, we trust with God's help that you would have wonderful days.